Sports and meteorologist Sally Patrick. Good evening, everybody. Topping tonight's News 11, severe weather rocks Minnesota and Iowa. The nasty weather is responsible for flooding and twisters that leveled farms and killed one person and set the dome's roof rocking. Just a little more than an hour ago, a tornado touched down in Clear Lake, which is 10 miles southeast of St. Cloud. The Sherburne County Sheriff's Office says it doesn't appear the damage was too extensive with some telephone poles and trees being knocked down. And right now, the Sheriff's Department says no one was hurt. Here in the Twin Cities tonight, a much milder story as nearly an inch and a quarter of rain flooded the University of Minnesota exit on Interstate 94. The heavy rains also flooded car engines and left some motorists stalled for a couple of hours. Fortunately, tonight's tornado and rain did not cause the massive destruction of yesterday's storm. That blast from Mother Nature leveled numerous farms and left a little girl dead. News 11's Dennis Stoffer leads a team report. Twisted debris and a lone silo is all that remains of this northern Iowa farmstead, and three farms just to the north in Minnesota fared only slightly better. The tornado that ripped through here Saturday evening left its mark for miles. And I've seen a lot of dust and mud fly through the air, and you realize right away that it was a tornado. When I stepped out, I looked to the east, and there was big funnels down to the ground, and they just head north. Neighbors found little to salvage here on the Hassebrook farm. The house was lifted right off its foundation. I suppose well, after the insurance man gets here, we'll probably get a bulldozer in here and just start cleaning. I don't know what else to do. You know, I don't know where to start. We'll make it, but it's pretty hard to take. There were still signs of life on the wolf farmstead as neighbors pulled pigs from the debris, and the wolf family escaped unharmed but everything here was destroyed except the house. Groups like this have shown up at all of the damaged farms to pitch in and help clean up. One farmer said, when something like this happens, you really find out who your friends are. If the concern and help of neighbors was the best news, the worst news was that a four-year-old Iowa girl was killed by the twister. At least four other people were injured, including one family who watched their home blow away above their heads. Melissa Young has their story. This is one of the machinery sheds that's part of Henry Kramer's farm. Today, it's also part of the twisted rubble left in the tornado's wake. The sheds, the house, everything was smashed in a matter of seconds. Henry and his family took cover in the basement after being alerted by a neighbor. It was straight down. It was about a quarter of a mile wide, and it was just black coming, just at you. There was no twist or nothing. But when it hit, it must have twist because the garage went one way, the house went the other way. As friends and neighbors dropped by to try and help, it was clear there wasn't much to salvage. The only thing left that's any good is this and that. That's the only two pieces. That aren't hurt, yeah. That's it out of everything. Henry's wife was injured in the storm. Two other relatives remain hospitalized. The Kramers may have lost everything, but they're thankful to still be alive. Melissa Young, News 11, near Adrian, Minnesota. Now, all of tonight's threatening weather has passed through the area, and weatherman Barry Zavan will have a complete update later in the newscast. And the effects of that storm caused the Metrodome to partially deflate last night, creating a few tense scenes for 30,000 Twins fans. As News 11's Amy Powell tells us, while the dome's roof was rolling, a lot of fans were taking it in stride. It was like a scene from a horror movie. The roof of the Metrodome began shaking violently and sinking. The lights started swaying. But this was no Hollywood special effect. The umpire ordered the players off the field, and surprised fans fled. It really wasn't too bad until it appeared that there was a hole on one side where outside air was coming in, and then there was one point where the ceiling dropped real low and a lot of water came in into the stands. It looks like the roof was going to fall down. So what did you do? I don't know. Stadium officials say there was never any danger to the 30,000 fans, but some people were drenched and a little frightened. We thought it was some kind of a tornado or something, but they said it was some kind of wind gust. We don't know what happened out here. I, don't know. I have no idea what happened. The problem started with a sudden wind shear that ripped a hole in the dome's roof, causing pressure inside to drop. We had an 80 mile an hour wind shear and uh, we know how to deal with that, but we need a little warning and we didn't have any warning at all. Less than 10 minutes after the ruckus began, it was over. Officials raised the pressure to stabilize the roof, and the game resumed. 
From the outside, there's no visible damage here at the Dome. And inside, the Twins game went on as scheduled today. But water continued dripping through the hole in the roof. Tomorrow, experts will fly in to figure out what to do about repairing the damage. Amy Powell, News 11, Minneapolis. And the Metrodome isn't the only dome stadium that has had wind shear problems. The same thing happened at the Pontiac Silver Dome. That's just outside Detroit a few years back. That wind shear ripped out a piece of that dome's top. And this isn't the first time there's been a problem with the Metrodome's roof. In fact, there have been problems four other times. The first time, September 1981, before it was even finished, workers had to patch up the inside of the roof after heavy snow caused it to collapse. There were no injuries. Then, just two months later, heavy snows once again caused a hole to form in the fiberglass top of the dome. Once again, the dome was still under construction and there were no injuries. In December of 1982, a slightly different story. Heavy snows once again fell on the Twin Cities and once again the roof of the dome collapsed, but this time it was because the snow on the roof shifted and hit a bucket suspended from a crane used to haul the snow off the roof. The accident happened just one week before a scheduled Vikings-Dallas game. And finally, in April of 1983, water came pouring through the dome roof after heavy snows caused another collapse. This time it was because the snow pushed the fiberglass roof downward, pinching a bolt left over from the dome's construction. This time workers weren't able to clean up the mess in time for a scheduled California Angels Twins game, and it was postponed until August of that year. Now one thing to keep in mind, in all of the problems with the dome's roof in the past, no one was inside when the accident happened. A Golden Valley congregation didn't have church services today after lightning hit its church. A hole can be seen inside the Good Shepherd Church where lightning hit the steeple last night. The damage forced the pews to be covered, and a bucket we eat was used to collect the water dripping from the hole. We may know tomorrow whether accused murderer Jeff... I just would like to point out that the month of April is not the showerer.